So in this video, we're talking about the combined gas law, okay, which deals with how pressure, volume, and temperature all interact with each other, okay? So here we go. The combined gas law, okay? So in this case, we are going to see how pressure, volume, and temperature affect one another. Okay, so we're actually going to be able to change all three. All right, um, all three of these are changing. The only thing that is kept constant is my amount of gas, okay? UMT, so my number of moles, all right? Everything else is changing. So I, again, I'm going to be able to change pressure, volume, and temperature. That's why we call it the combined gas law, okay? And the, the cool part about the combined gas law, okay? If I look at the other gas laws I've dealt with, so boil is P1 V1 equals P2 V2, okay? Pressure times volume equals pressure times volume, okay? Charles is volume over temp equals volume over temp. And gay lessics is pressure over temp equals pressure over temp, okay? Now, this may not look neat to you, but if you're noticing, okay, it's called the combined gas law for a reason. We're gonna combine all three of these laws. We leave Avogadro out, okay? Avogadro's gas law is not involved in this because we're keeping the amount of moles constant, okay? But the ones that are dealing with all of the other types of variables, we're gonna look at. So if you notice, pressure, always on the numerator, right? Pressure's on the numerator here, Pressure's on the numerator here, okay? Volume, always on the numerator, okay? For Boyle's law and for Charles' law, volume is on the numerator. Temperature, always on the denominator for Charles and gay lessics So when I combine all three, that's exactly what ends up happening, okay? Pressure and volume are on the numerator, temperature's on the denominator. It's not hopefully too confusing. You're just smushing all of those three laws together, okay? P1 times V1 divided by T1 equals P2 times V2 divided by T2, okay? So um, if nothing else, okay, I know that this one's on the back of your periodic table, and if you totally forget Boyles and Charles and gay lessics law, who cares? Because they're all actually within the combined gas law, okay? It's a little cheat. So if you ever had a problem and it's not actually using the combined gas law, you can still use the equation for the combined gas law. So if you had something that was just comparing pressure and volume, but you forgot what Boyle's law was, you just cover up the variable you're not using and look at how pressure and volume affect each other. It's P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. If you had something that was just pressure and temperature and you forgot how to set it up, look at your combined gas law. You're just looking at pressure and temperature. Cover up volume. I don't know how to do that from this angle. I'm gonna like break my arm, okay? You get it, cover up volume, all right? And you have P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, all right? Same thing if you are dealing with just volume and temp, cover up pressure, okay? And you can see this would be Charles law, volume and temperature, okay? So you actually have all of your gas laws combined into one. So it's not bad, all right? Just unfortunately when you solve equations with this, there's just more stuff to take into account, okay? All right. And we actually don't talk about any of this being like directly or indirectly related because there's multiple pieces of the pie here. So you don't have to worry about like what the graph of that would look like. You don't have to figure out 
direct or indirect relationship, that's we're only talking about that we're only talking about two variables at a time. This dude's dealing with three, so it's less stuff to deal with. All right, example number one. So if I had an initial condition of 12 atmospheres, 2.3 liters, and 200 Kelvin, and my final conditions, I raise my pressure to 14 atmospheres. Uh, I don't know what my volume two is, and my temperature is also raised to 300 Kelvin. The question is find volume two, okay? What is my new volume? And this could be said in any type of like very long-winded word equation, but just break it down, right? What are your initial conditions? What are your final conditions? What don't you know? And that's it, okay? And you just set it up. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2, okay? And the first example, everything is in the units you need to begin with. So 12 atmospheres is my pressure one, times volume one is 2.3, divided by 200 Kelvin equals pressure two, 14 atmospheres, times, I don't know what my volume two is, divided by 300 Kelvin, okay? And you can do this the exact same way that you've solved all of the other ones, all right? You can just, you know, butterfly method this thing, all right? And you would get 12, ATM, oh, different color, who knew? Times 2.3 liters times 300 Kelvin equals 14 atmospheres times V2 times 200 Kelvin, okay? If you multiply all these dudes together, you would get 8,280 atmospheres times liters, times Kelvin. That looks like the weirdest frigging unit ever, but don't freak out, it'll cancel out and it'll be okay. 14 times 200, 2800 atmospheres, times Kelvin, times my unknown, times V2, right? I'm trying to solve for V2, let's get this up. All right, so divide by 2800. ATM and Kelvin. All right. That will cancel. And we'll cancel out atmospheres. We'll cancel out Kelvin. And look at that. Okay, you just plug in some math into your calculator. You would get 2.96 liters. I'm left in liters is your volume two. Be enough, right? Uh, that was your initial question. This is nine minutes already. If you guys actually need a second example, I'd be happy to do one for you. Make another video if you need it, okay? Email me. Um, the other one just deals with what if you have to convert. Right, so what if you're given your amount of temperature in Celsius? What if you're given your pressure in something else, MMHG, okay? Um, and that's it, okay? But there you go, all right? That's the combined gas law, okay? It combines all three laws together. Easy enough. Good luck. Don't screw up.